Okay, I wanted to talk a little bit about LS engine timing, specifically using HP tuners to talk about what engine timing actually is. When we talk about a number like 15 degrees of timing, we're talking about 15 degrees of crankshaft rotation before top dead center on the compression stroke. So what's actually happening is the spark's actually firing at 15 degrees of crankshaft rotation before that piston reaches top dead center. It's also important to talk about pre-ignition, detonation, knock sensors, and the differences between pre-ignition and detonation, even though they're used interchangeably a lot, they're actually two different things that are involved in this topic of timing and we're going to get into octane, compression ratios, boost levels, spark plug, heat ranges, gaps, those type of things that affect all play in together when we're trying to find our optimum timing and keep our engine safe and understanding what the harmful things that are going on in there when we've got pre-ignition and detonation and why those things happen. Okay, so the difference between pre-ignition and detonation. Pre-ignition actually happens when the air fuel mixture is ignited before the spark is actually commanded. And how that happens is hot spots inside the chamber, whether it be the spark plug itself, hot spots in the combustion chamber of the cylinder head, on the cylinder wall, just too hot in general, too much compression for the octane, too much boost for the octane. A lot of different things can happen, but pre-ignition is lighting the air fuel mixture before the spark actually ignites. Detonation is a second flame front that happens after. So the spark ignites the air fuel mixture and that's when we're talking about timing advance before top dead center as that flame front travels and builds pressure to push that piston back down whereas detonation would be after that initial flame there could be secondary explosions inside there that are damaging and you'll see that is it could be pitting, it could be black spots on your spark plug will show up. Your spark plug, your knock sensors come in and hear that as a resonance inside the engine, almost like a tuning fork. There's a specific resonance it hears and it thinks that's knock and it'll start pulling timing. Well, the problem with relying on your knock sensors is there has to actually be some detonation for it to hear before it starts pulling timing. So ideally, in the tuning process, we'll see that and pull timing ourselves out of our base map so that we don't have to rely on the knock sensors to pull that timing out and you're probably sacrificing power as well. So a lot of things play into the ideal timing on, a, on any motor combination, whether it be the compression ratio, the amount of boost, the fuel you're running, whether it's alcohol based or it's high octane or it's pump gas, whether you've got a secondary fuel source like a meth injection, uh, the design of the combustion chambers and the cylinder heads, you, better heads can sometimes run more timing. They're not as susceptible to pre-ignition or detonation. Uh, the cold, the spark plug heat range you've got in there. If you've got too hot of a plug, you're gonna you're not gonna be able to run a lot of timing. You're gonna have issues with it, either pre-ignit pre-igniting or detonating. Uh, too cold a plug, you might have other issues. You're not going to meet max power or you could have idle issues on a street car or something, but you can run more timing. Um, spark plug gap. Too much gap, you start blowing out the spark on a uh, boosted setup. Uh, too narrow of a gap, you might be more prone to pre-ignition. So everything plays in together. So every combination is going to be different on on the timing how much timing advance you can have where you need to pull it out you know do you need to pull it out near your torque peak and then can you put more timing in at higher rpm so here we are looking at a, a base map for a spark map on a ls combination it's a 50 percent ethanol on a 14 pounds of boost so what you're seeing here is low rpm 
and low pressure, you can run a lot more timing. You can get a stronger idle. You can get more response just off idle and throttle tip in response. Whereas we build pressure, we got to drop that timing down. We start having issues with detonation. So especially what you'll see is higher pressure at low RPM, like lugging it in a taller gear, something you're not going to see a lot of in a normal condition or a race situation, but is more prone to detonating with those higher pressure with lower RPM. As we get higher pressure and higher RPM, we start adding timing back in. And then maybe sometimes around our peak torque, we'll need to take a little timing out of it. It's just a little bit less, especially you'll see that on stock bottom end bills, try to save them stock rods from building so much pressure down low, bending rods. So that's kind of what we're seeing here in this map. You can see low pressures down here or high pressures down here and higher rpms this way it's as it builds back up that's just an example on that combination um let's take a similar combination and we'll get uh pump gas this is a pump gas setup with actually less compression and less boost and I'm able I'm having to run three degrees less timing peak and we're talking about peak timing we're talking at your peak power now keep in mind also on these on a boosted setup you're gonna go off the chart so what happens when you go off the chart is it'll reference the last number on that line so at 5600 it's got 14 degrees of timing advance at 1.2 grams cylinder air mass per second so if it goes higher than that in air mass then it's going to run that 14 degrees so that gets into scaling of the tune and things like that to not go off your cylinder your timing map to give you some more control that i would see that more useful in a turbo setup than like a pro charge setup where it builds boost with rpm it doesn't seem to be a problem at all just letting it base it off that last line as RPM increases. So I'm going to compare this just for reference here. Something interesting is this is uh, the difference between a pump gas tune and a 50% ethanol tune. Even though the 50% ethanol tune combination had more compression and more boost, it was still able to run 3.5 degrees timing more timing advance at peak power than the pump gas combination now the reason this is is because that cooler alcohol cooler intake charge less prone to detonation and pre-ignition uh, also had a colder spark plug in it you know that probably wasn't near as big a factor as the 50% ethanol because I also had the higher octane so the higher octane is less resist is more resistant to detonation so I was able to that's where the a large amount of that power gain is on the ethanol is it allows that timing advance and that's building power without detonating and also the cooler charge that comes along with the ethanol so those two things combined was a pretty significant power gain. Now, one thing I'd like to mention on that as well is some people they use uh, meth injection. Maybe it comes on at four psi. What are you doing below four psi? You know, those first few pounds of you first come into you know at three thousand RPM, you start coming into boost, let's say, and then you got a couple pounds of boost. You might not have that instant response that you could get where you can add more timing everywhere with ethanol, even. At lower RPMs, like here at 4,000 RPM, I've got 2.5 degrees more timing in it than I had with pump gas, even though I've got more compression and more boost. It's just a lot more responsive in that mid-range it, as it comes into boost than it was on the pump gas, both for the compression and the additional timing. This is more torque, not to mention the peak timing advance of 3.5 degrees. That's a lot of horse. I mean, that could be over 50 horsepower gain just on ethanol alone. So that's kind of just a little bit about uh, fuel types and octane, how it can affect your timing. 
uh, touching on compression. You know, if you you could run a lower compression engine, you could run a lot more boost before and before you'd have detonation problems. There's a trade-off there. There's always the co the entire combination comes into play, and that's kind of the main emphasis here is understanding the difference between pre-ignition detonation, the causes of those, and how it affects your timing and your whole combination of what actually benefits it the most is the combination of these things with timing, the spark plug, the fuel type, the compression ratio, the boost amount of boost, etc. Okay, since we're in HP tuners, it's also worth mentioning that uh, there's some other things that can impact your timing. If you have your base timing table set, say you got 17 degrees advanced at 6400 RPM, and you're only seeing 15 degrees in your when you're doing a log, you're scanning at the track or on the dyno or something, and you're wondering where that's coming from. Well, you need to go back in your correction, base corrections. It could be your base table for engine coolant temperature as your in coolant temperature rises or lowers. It, it could be affecting timing. Like here, I've got it starting to take a little bit of timing out as the temperature gets over 203 on the engine coolant temp. So that's one example of something to look at. Also, your intake air temperature. As your intake air temperature rises, it's going to be more prone to uh, having detonation or pre-ignition problems. So that might be, you know, you find a safe intake air temperature that at which that point you cross, you start having issues that you might want to start taking some timing out. So here at 122 degrees intake air, I'm pulling one degree. We're at 158 which I've never been that high, it's not a problem with ethanol and a centrifugal supercharger, but I've got it pulling out even more. So those are things that can be impacting your total timing, what you're actually seeing. So it's worth taking a look at. And then uh, another thing is, I'll put some pictures up and I'll do a little bit of showing how you can read your spark plugs. I've actually got a video to that, I'll probably just end up linking in that video. but. Uh, where you can read your spark plugs as well so you don't have to trust just your knock sensors if they're not showing knock but your spark plugs are showing signs of detonation or you can read your timing mark on there that is, you, you just need to take some timing out of it or maybe you're reading knock but you're not getting any signs of detonation on the spark plugs and it shows you can put a lot more timing in it you can diagnose you know some of your knock sensors maybe you need to desensitize them maybe you need to do some other things you can use some race gas sometimes to verify you know there's troubleshooting things you can do to verify what's knock and what's the fake false knock and uh, so you can maximize your timing you're not giving up much power pull and timing out with knock sensors that shouldn't be so that's just kind of some basics on understanding GM LS engine timing, what it actually is, what pre-ignition and detonation is, that sometimes, you know, is mistaken as being the same thing, and what knock sensors, are, how they actually work, they're hearing the detonation, the resonance in the motor, and so that's how you get fake knock, you can have other sounds, whether it's a transmission during a shift, or a vibration from your exhaust touching something, it's causing a resonance in there, and causing your uh, false knock, so... That's something all those things play in to uh, getting actual timing that you've got set up on your base table and getting maximum performance without hurting your engine. Is our timing mark. As this strap, ground strap, heats up and it changes color, we can look for the point on the strap where the color changes. And sometimes you'll get a, a nice line so you can see that change and right there you can kind of see that line on the strap going across there right at the edge of the bend now that would show that I could put some more timing in this as that bend, that line moves farther down towards the base as you add timing and you don't want it to go all the way to the weld but in the middle of that bend is a good place to be and then if it's up on the flat, you don't have near enough timing in it. So you see there, I'm just on the edge of the bend and I could really put some more timing in that and it end up moving that timing mark farther around the corner. 
So that's another thing we can kind of check. Um, the one thing you really can't do other than you can see how much fuel is on the base of these. This had a lot of idle time and cruising around. So that's why I don't like to use, I like to use the wide band when I'm making my fueling decisions because it's not ideal to have a lot of idle time on these plugs when you're reading them for the air fuel ratio. But you can still see the other thing you can look at is how clean and white that porcelain is. The vid the part you can see here. Um, one thing that'd be bad is to have little tiny black specks on that. You'd have to look really close. I like to use a flashlight and look really close or a real bright light and see if there's any black specks on that white porcelain. And if there is, that's the beginning signs of detonation. So you definitely want to watch that. If you've got black specs, you want to figure out why, whether you're lean, too much timing, combination of both. And even worse yet would be if you shine a flashlight on that and look really close, you see tiny little shiny particles. That's p part of your piston or ring lens being melted, essentially. You're getting detonation. So you definitely don't want that. And if you start getting to the point where you're melting the strap or the tip of the electrode, or the porcelain's been melted, then you're way too hot and you've probably already caused damage. So really watch for those little speckles, any sign of that when you're tuning the signs of detonation that maybe maybe your knock sensors didn't pick it up or didn't react fast enough pulling timing and you still got some detonation there because that's what the knock sensors are trying to detect by their hearing it by the time they pull timing could be too late so you definitely want to watch for signs of detonation now another thing if you're going to look for wide open throttle fueling you're not going to really be able to tell that without cutting open the plug and again you know you've idled around you've had other things cruise time on it so it's not an accurate test anyway if you haven't done just a wide open throttle pull without a lot of idle time but I'm going to demonstrate just for the sake of showing how you do that. You're going to need to cut this plug open.